on the experiment. So picture it. You know, we see a line that's two electrons. That's the pair. That's what holds them together. So for hydrogen gas, H2, these just happen to get to where they're like magnets. They're happy. The electron repulses the positives, and the positives push the electrons together, and, and there's a happy little H2 gas. Okay? So out in space, remember, we were saying the stars are going to make carbon... you would picture carbon, carbon-12, remember? Six protons, six neutrons, that gives it the mass of 12. That's the nucleus. Electron in the first shell. The next shell out, further away, to get six, going to have four of its own, so four other ones are going to come and bond. So let's take hydrogen, for example. Hydrogen's a proton. And each of those protons has an electron. So now you've got a bond to hold that proton a certain distance out there. But see, now you've got two, four, six, eight in that outer shell. What this makes is carbon, four H's, CH4. That's a methane, methane molecule. So what you need to know is it's got a carbon with a mass of 12, two electrons in the inner shell, four in the outer shell. The hydrogen brings four more. So now you've got the eight. This is a stable methane. So you'll find methane one of the first molecules. Molecules are when atoms come and combine. So a neon atom or a helium atom you don't call those molecules. Hydrogen, this is one where the people that don't know what they're talking about start calling them molecules. Well, if you call it hydrogen, they usually mean H2, but you got to be specific because a hydrogen is just one. And the teachers do it. Even I do it sometimes when I'm not paying attention. I get really tired. So here is your methane. learn this distinction here between the carbon and the nitrogen, you'll have it down. So the nitrogen is usually a 14 if you call it. What that is is seven neutrons and seven protons. nucleus is going to be positive, and all these first go-arounds all have a pair of electrons on the inside. Oops, wrong one. Hmm. Nitrogen is number seven. It's got a 14, but seven there, so... Seven minus two leaves five electrons. So what they end up with is a pair of electrons out there in space. And you'll end up with three bonds with one H. Plus 
one bond, two bonds, three bonds, the electron pair for some reason stays by itself. Where nitrogen does three bonds. And that's called ammonia. If you know the difference between methane and ammonia, the big thing is that it's got an electron pair there. So sometimes another proton can come by, which will give it o the whole molecule overall a plus charge. So we'll call it NH4 plus. But again, what it should be known is it's NH3 with a P plus. anything about chemistry, the difference between Now for shortcut purposes, we can remember where the shortcuts come from. I sent a paper for publication, some guy asked me to list a reference. Carbon would have four bonds, so carbon one, two, three, four to carbon. That'd be a C2 molecule, right? Next to carbon on the periodic table is nitrogen. For that to form N2, one of the strongest bonds found in nature is the nitrogen nitrogen triple bond. So N2 is a triple bond, and the way it gets that octet of electrons is two of these lone pairs out there. I always put a little shell around it. So there's carbon, nitrogen. Now next to nitrogen comes oxygen, which has a double bond. So in order to get the eight electrons on O2, this again, you'll hear people call it oxygen. Well, is it O2 or is it just an oxygen atom? O2 here is going to get two lone pairs of electrons there. So which bonds do you think are stronger? The quadruple bond? You never see this very much. People debate it, but it exists way out in space. N2, that's what 78% of our atmosphere is. That's why things don't combust and just light up on fire by themselves because the 21.3% of oxygen, O2, we have, that burns sugars in our body. So quadruple, four bonds, nitrogen, three bonds, oxygen, two bonds, come over these halogens now, like fluorine. Let's use purple for fluorine. Fluorine gets a single bond. So do all the other elements below that in the periodic table. So there's Cl2, we'll call it. Bromine, iodine, some others also. So those are going to have three lone pairs of electrons around them. One, two, two focus on the F2 for now. If you have an F2 molecule, it's going to have a lot of electron density around it. And 
this is our C star, C for carbon. Cincinnati red stars make carbon. Cincinnati just had a no-hitter thrown against them from Philadelphia in the first game of the playoffs for the first round of the National League, so we'll get rid of that. Now our table, see, evolution was survival of the stablest element. I used to get a lot of people whining and complaining, you know, it's such an easy thing. Well, that's what the table here is. This one is a continuous ribbon, if you notice. It's hard to see, but the carbon goes all the way around. And then where the D groups, these have 10 electrons. That's why it opens up. And then down here with the 14s, opens even higher, further. So back to our introductory level. They go to double bond plus H2 goes on to make, take one of these oxygens here, so you got O and two H's. So this is why you need to know how to balance an equation, because you've got two O's, well, you're going to need twice as much. You're going to need another H2. You get two waters. And the way you write that equation is O2 plus 2 H2 goes on to make two H2Os. And the way that oxygen looks, this is what makes water so special is, Remember I said you got to have the eight electrons around it. So you got two electrons in that inner shell. You got to have eight in the outer shell. So the way you do it is you got two on the inside. So here's one, two in a bond, three, four in the bond. So five, six are lone pairs. You see now how you got the Protons kind of push down together. They call it 104.5 degrees. The angle between those guys, the protons, call them hydrogens, protons, whatever you want to call them. And these lone pair of electrons are going to give it a real negative atmosphere out there around that nucleus. And in here you've got eight protons and eight neutrons just in the nucleus. One shell of two electrons, and then these eight electrons give you two lone pairs. So when water, being a liquid, has got another water H2O next to it, it's able to pull a proton off sometimes. And that's what an acid is. So they'll write it many different ways. Most, you'll see H3O+. Plus. But think of it, it's H2O with a P+. Plus. So if you get that down, you'll realize what's really happening with this. See, I want to draw this hokey because I don't want it so fancy that it looks intimidating. Now, something else I need you to learn, 